Hello, my name's Alan Paul, and this is an unboxing video for our latest game, The Ming Voyages, designed by David Mortimer and Alan Paul, and published by Surprise Dare Games, in conjunction with Two Tomatoes Games and Frosted Games. The game is available in English, French, Spanish and German. It's also, as you can see from the number two here, and number two on the side of the box, it is the second game in our Pocket Campaigns series which started with the Cousins War. And this one is called The Ming Voyages, a game of treasure and conquest for one or two players. Now, let's just get on with it and have a look inside the shrink wrapping. Let's see what we've got in the box. Now, of course, I know what's in the box, because I'm designer and publisher, but let's have a look anyway. This allows us uh, to, to feast our eyes a bit on the Clements Francis gorgeous artwork. Very shiny-easy. We love that artwork. Um, I'll come back to that in a second. Have a look at the back of the box. It gives, gives you a brief list of the contents, and you can see the bit of the setup here. I'll come back to that. Right inside. So, we have a whole bunch of cards. As it's a primarily a card game, you'd expect that. Nice size cards. These are the same size as our Cousins War cards, uh, 105 by 75 mil, so they're nice and chunky. And we also have a whole bunch of wooden pieces, and I'll come, I'll come back to that in a second. Um, and we have some rules. And a board. Looking quite. Let's get the board out first, because that might be quite a nice place to start. So the board is folded in half. There we go. That is the full-blown Ming Voyages board. That. Let's just see if I can focus in a little bit more on that. Yes, it's, it's rather gorgeous. I wish I had a video which would be slightly better at showing this off, but I think you get the general idea here. So you've got areas, borderland areas, which the sides are fighting over. At the top here we've got barbarian homeland areas where the barbarians start, and in here we have, well, China proper, really. Um, and for those of you who might get geographically confused, there is in fact here an indication that... Uh, uh, which way up do I point this? <laughs> north. North is that way. Um, so this is a slightly off-centre in terms of the normal map of China that you might see. And here we have the South China Sea and the various uh, places that the Chinese are trying to reach with their oceanic voyages. So that's the board map uh, we have on the back. Which is a rather nice look at the full picture that Clements did for the for the box for the box art and we can see it in its full glory here the lovely little addition of the, the barbarians in the foreground threatening threatening the uh, Chinese treasure voyages They're rather gorgeous so that's the that's the board let's put that out of the way let's go to the heart of the matter the other heart of the matter which is these cards so um, these are, there is in fact a central uh, little tab for this in the middle. Here we go. We can just take that off. There we go. It allows us to get into the cards relatively easily. There we go. So, let's have a look at these. Look at the front one first. There we go. This is the main main deck cards. There's, in fact, in the Ming Voyages, there's two decks of cards. Um, the, there's one deck, which is the main deck. Let's just go to the back so it's easier to see. There's one deck, which is the the main deck, and it has these, this pattern on it, this shiny reddish pattern on it. Um, it's the main deck. And then there's the, these, um, the ones with the with the Mayong tiles are the for the solo the solo variant. So these are difficulty levels: level one, level two, and level three. Difficulty type things. And these cards, these three cards, 
allowing you to specify the detail of the particular difficulty level that you're playing for that particular game. You can actually, you've got a bit of control over the difficulty you want to use in the solo game. We'll come back to that in a second. Let's look at the main deck cards. This is for the two player game. So we have got uh, rather gorgeous, rather gorgeous cards here. Barbarian cards. Let's zoom in a bit. So these, the, the uh, barbarian cards. This is a barbarian dagger, and again, it's the barbarian that gets to use these particular events. It's a betrayal card. We have. Maelstrom, similarly a barbarian card. And on the other side here we have these. These are ones which the, the Ming Emperor will use. And they have got this wonderfully glorious red scroll background on them. Um, and the numbers here refer to the number of voyages you've completed. And uh, if you've completed one to three voyages, you get the top event. If you've completed four to six, then you get the, the bottom event. Those are those. And then the other uh, main deck cards have got um, usually like this, they've got a, a barbarian event or a barbarian action at the top and a Ming action at the bottom. And the rules explain how those are used. Each of these cards actually does have, you can see it, a tiny little number. <laughs> you can, can't quite see it. Each of them are numbered uh, so you can easily fish out any particular card and refer to it if you need to. Um, so that's the that's the main deck cards. So they look rather gorgeous. Let's put those to one side. And then the the uh, Barbarian Bot deck, I guess is what we normally call these. This is the, the solo play, <coughs> and they're divided into three sections. There's the three difficulty level, there's the, the two difficulty level. And there's the one difficulty level, and each of these has on them uh, an indication of what you will do. You're, as a solo player, you're playing the Emperor. So this indicates what you will do as the non-player Barbarian. So in this particular case, and this is the Barbarian Dagger again to show it to the Barbarian. In this particular case, take a horde from supply and place it in whichever the Western Mongols and then choose has the fewest hordes, and if you agree to tie break. So that's explaining exactly what you do. Uh, when you're acting as the as the barbarian bot, and that's the level one cards. They are quite text rich because it's in order to make this a really competitive bot, uh, we've we've had to kind of be very explicit about what you do in each case. These level two cards are slightly more uh, more dangerous. This one is taking two hordes and putting them into place, and then the as, you, as you'd expect the the level three. The level three ones take three hordes and supply and put them one in each by own homeland. So things get more difficult as the um, difficulty level gets higher. Let's get rid of that zoom. There we go. So that's the cards. They look rather good. They, the, the thing I like about these cards is that they are really nice and chunky. They will last a long time and they're very easy to to see what you're, it's very easy to see what you're doing because they're very nice and large uh, and I, I like that. I'm pleased with the way they've come out. So what else we got? Well, we have wooden pieces. We have some dice. The dice are used for the combat system. So the the uh, the Ming Emperor uses the green dice, the three green dice, and the a barbarian player uses the, the white dice. White with green spots, green with white spots, and they look pretty good. I'm happy with those. And then we have in a Zipmot bag, these are uh, wooden pieces which were improved as a result of the, of the Kickstarter campaign. So let's have a look and see what we've got here. We have the piece of resistance, if you like. We have the junks. These are printed. Let's put a couple here and see if we can zoom in on these. These are the, these are the printed junks. Um, let's move these into the centre of the picture a bit. Let's see if we'll focus in on those. Uh, doesn't really focus in very well, does it? The video quality is not brilliant. Uh, 
but you can see here that printing it does look really nice. I have to say, very, very pleased with the way that's come out. So you get seven junks. There we go. And you also have a bunch of these, you have five of these um, barbarian uh, barbarian settlements, is what we call them. They're kind of areas that the barbarians can put down into the borderland areas and they make it easier for the barbarian to win battles. And they're printed, they're printed on both sides. This, and you get five of those. Um, we also have, oh, there's a red, there's a red cube which is used for the tiebreak for the solo game. We have a whole bunch of green cubes which are the Ming Emperor's troops. So there's 12 of those, Ming Emperor troops. And similarly we have 12 white cubes which are the hordes, the barbarian hordes. So they use those. And then we also have five gold cubes for, funnily enough, gold that the Ming Emperor has to use to um, fund his journeys um, overseas. So that's the, those pieces as well. Let's come out again. So we have rule books. There are, in fact, in this game, two rule books. We, we decided the easiest way to do this was to split the two rule books and have pretty much complete rule books, one for two player and one for one for solo player, one for two players. Um, and uh, here we've got what you'd expect. There's a whole, there's a whole bunch of explanations set up. There's a big setup picture for how to start the game. This is the solo. This is the solo rule book. So the solo play setup. Um, explanation of the difficulty levels um, and how to play, how to do the tie breaks, um, and, an, and examples of of combat, it's very important to get an idea of this, and a reference for the uh, particular um, actions that you can take. And there's a quick reference on the back of each rule book, so that rather than having to refer to the whole of the rule book during play once you know the game a bit, you can just stick that in front of you, and that will allow you to refer during play to critical aspects. So that's the, the rules. We also have included a, a bunch of, um, of Ziploc bags. So the idea here is that you can stick things in very conveniently so we can put the wooden pieces in one, we can put each deck of cards in another one, and so it's very easy to select whether you want to play two-player or solitaire when you start. So let's put the board back out again. Here we go. Rules, wooden pieces, and most importantly, cards. And there we have the Ming Rollages. Thanks very much for watching.